It's the final weekend of the NBA regular season. Just three days remain in the regular season before the postseason gets underway next week. Today, tomorrow, and regular season finale Sunday. On this Friday, we have 30 NBA teams, all 30 around the association in action with so much to figure out. J.Y., we start with the Milwaukee Bucks. We learned earlier this week that Giannis Antetokounmpo will not be available for the remainder of this regular season. They hope to have him back early on in the playoffs. Milwaukee was on a slide. Now they've won two straight games, and they have a game lead in front of the New York Knicks for the two seed in the Eastern Conference. With Giannis's status, though, based on the injured calf, very much up in the air, what is your outlook for Milwaukee moving forward? I don't think it's great, Ben, and I think it's really going to depend on their first round matchup. I, I know this sounds crazy. If I'm if I'm Milwaukee, and I'm the two. I want no part of Philadelphia or Miami, where it lines up right now. What you need to hope to happen, honestly, is Indiana to drop down or Orlando to drop down in the next uh, couple of days and get a team possibly with less experience in the first round. Maybe hoping that the moment is too big for them. Uh, You know, obviously, Milwaukee has been playing better as late, but it's kind of a tricky stretch right now, Ben, because the last two games that they have, right, on Milwaukee are Oklahoma City and Orlando, an Oklahoma City team that right now is tied in the lost column with Minnesota. They try to get the two seed so that they can have home court advantage in a possible semifinal matchup. And Orlando right now that's got 34 losses, one ahead of Philadelphia and Miami, uh, one ahead of Philadelphia. So they need to win as well. Tough stretch for Milwaukee. No easy game to last mm. two. No, certainly not. And also, Coach, that other team you were just talking about, the Philadelphia 76ers, when it's all said and done, I expect them to have an eight-game win streak entering into the playoffs. They're going to take on the Ooh. Orlando Magic and the Brooklyn Nets. I think that's a 2-0 sweep for them, which I think should be able to get them out of that seven seed and at least into the six seed. So if we're looking at the Philadelphia 76ers, just a few short weeks ago, close to a 40-1 to price here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Now you're taking a look there at that 19-1, to so basically cut in half to the NBA champions. We're not saying they're going to do that but talk to me about the Philadelphia 76ers with Joel Embiid looking MVP good right now coach he is Donnie and if you really think about it folks it, before Joel Embiid got hurt you would arguably say that the, the Philadelphia 76ers were the second best team in the Eastern Conference in my opinion until he got hurt so to me getting him back yeah. and you'll see that price if they move up to six that eight to one may go to six to one to five to one because just for the simple fact that they're out of the playing tournament and they're going to get a matchup versus New York. Listen, I'm a Knicks fan. I know that the Knicks have owned the Philadelphia 76ers during the regular season. It don't mean jack when the playoffs come and Joel mm-hmm. Embiid, if he stays healthy, makes that team as dangerous as anybody that comes. They can pick up Milwaukee and then maybe you get the matchup I thought we were going to get all along, which is Boston, Philadelphia, Eastern Conference Finals. The battle of 2-3 for those seed lines in the Eastern Conference while you're watching what Philly does at 7 and maybe Indiana at 6 is going to be fascinating theater here down this final weekend of the NBA regular season because you're on the other side of the Eastern Conference playoff bracket from the Boston Celtics. Speaking of the team currently in the 3 spot in the Eastern Conference, that's the New York Knicks, winners of 3 in a row led by Jalen Brunson five straight games of 35 plus points they got dealt a pretty big blow and they've been banged up in large part for the second half of this season and we got confirmation about a week and a half ago that Julius Randle would not be here even for the playoffs but J.Y. when you look at the New York Knicks and the way this team is currently constructed can the Knickerbockers make a deep run come playoff time it all depends on the matchup, guys. And I'm going to be dead honest with you. You know, I, I think they can get out of the first round. Listen, do I think they can beat Philadelphia? No. Do I think they can beat Cleveland? Yes. I think they can beat Orlando. Can they beat Milwaukee? I think so. I think, listen, here's the thing with the Knicks. Jalen Brunson has been the best free agent signing the Knicks have had since Bernard King. Right? If you look at what this guy has done, elevating this team. I mean, guys, if you watched the game last night, it didn't matter who it was, Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown, Derek White. He cooked all of them, all of them. So his play has been dynamic. Now, my question is, is can OG stay healthy, right? Can the rest of these guys who are playing, like Deontay DiVincenzo, who are playing out of his mind, 
Can they do it in a big spot in the playoffs? It all depends on the matchup. But the one thing you know about New York and Tom Thibodeau is they'll play as hard as anybody and they'll defend you and they will be prepared. We're taking a look here at those Eastern Conference standings here, and we really want to zero in to five, six, and seven. That's your Orlando Magic, mm. the Indiana Pacers, and the Philadelphia 76ers. Also keep in mind, the pa- so Magic, I should say, are hoping that we get a tie because the Sixers would end up losing out on the tiebreaker in a three-way tie. But in a tiebreaker just with the Magic, the Philadelphia 76ers would have that and also have a game against the Orlando Magic coming up. So a little topsy-turvy there. But if we're taking a look at the actual odds to win the East here. It's the Boston Celtics at a minus 185 price, but the intrigue then comes, Coach, with the Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers sit at the FanDuel Sportsbook. A 7-1 to price on the Bucks, who currently are the two seed. The Sixers currently the seven seed at an 8-1 to price. Those numbers could change based on the statistics that come this weekend with wins or losses by either one of those clubs. So is there value? Let's take the Celtics out of the equation, Coach. Is there value on another team here to win the East that you think you can make money with? I think it's Philadelphia, provided they, 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 that, listen, as long as they, as long as they don't end up in that seven, eight game, because guys, I'll be honest with you, Miami in a seven, eight game, one game scenario yeah. with Spolstra, I'm nervous. But if I'm not mistaken, last year, they lost a seven, eight game and had to turn around and win to get into the playoffs, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So to me, yes, Miami is extremely dangerous, but Philadelphia, if you want to grab them, grab them now. Because if they move up to six, I think that eight to one goes to six or five to one, and they're going to jump Milwaukee because of JoJo and Bead and the fact that they don't have to deal with the playing tournament. Unlike your Kentucky takes, both of you are making great points about the Sixers' value <laughs> right now in the Eastern Conference. DRS had been saying that, though, for a while. 31-1 to 1 was the number he mm-hmm. highlighted for Philadelphia to win the NBA championship just about two and a half weeks ago with the optimistic reports that Joel Embiid could return by the end of the regular season, even ahead of schedule, and it's paid off for Philly winners of six in a row. Now we go over to the Western Conference standings where a lot more is up in the air, even at the top. We've got to figure out who's going to be the one seed, how two and three are going to fall between more than likely the Timberwolves and the Thunder, and who gets home for advantage in a playoff series we already know in the opening round. That's the 4-5 matchup between the Clippers and the Mavericks, but will the series be in Dallas to begin or out in Los Angeles? J.Y., let's go to the top spot. Denver Nuggets, a huge victory earlier this week at home at altitude against the Minnesota Timberwolves to have that game advantage for the number one overall seed for the reigning NBA champs. As we look at the remaining schedule for the Nuggets, T-Wolves, and Thunder, Denver, despite being both on the road, incredibly, incredibly beneficial. Will the Nuggets, by the time we reach Sunday night in the end of the regular season, be the top overall seed in the Western Conference? Yes, because if they lose to Memphis or San Antonio, let's be honest, Ben, they don't deserve the one seed if they lose one of those two games, even on the road. So I think they uh, become the one seed. The intrigue obviously goes to two, right? When you look at Minnesota and you look at OKC, it's kind of interesting to look at a team like Minnesota. They got uh, Phoenix. Well, Phoenix is in a dogfight, right? Because they're going to try and get the six. So they need to try and turn around and win that game. And then Atlanta, which I don't think they could pass Chicago because I think they're two games behind. So that could Correct. be a rest game. So that doesn't mean much. Meanwhile, Oklahoma City has Dallas, who may try to see if they can catch uh, the Clippers for home court advantage. By the way, I can't wait for that series because Luka hates oh. the Clippers more than any team in the league. So that's going to be outstanding cinema. But then you look at the fact of, Milwaukee. That's a game that's going to mean something because the Knicks may be trying to chase to get to two. So to me, it's intriguing to me, but I still think it's probably going to end up in that same order. Denver one, two Minnesota, three OKC in the Western Conference. We take a look at that Western Conference coach, and again, a lot of things still up in the air. Six through ten, Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Warriors, and Lakers. Let's put the focus on the yeah. Lakers, who now look like they might wind up in the 10th seed overall. Give me a look at the Los Angeles Lakers. If they are the 10th seed, the chance to actually climb in to that top eight when it's all said and done in this play-in round. Well, if you look at that schedule, you know, obviously the last two games I'm looking at uh, the Lakers right now, they have the Pelicans and they have the Grizzlies. So obviously one game is going to mean a ton. Second game, not so much. So a Lakers team, guys, that's been wildly inconsistent. 
We don't know if Andy, Anthony Davis in the playoffs, guys, he can put together monumental performances and they can pull up a performance that's an absolute stinker. Do I trust the Lakers to win two games in a row, potentially on the road? Guys, I don't. I don't. I know that sounds a wild take, but they're just so wildly inconsistent, particularly shooting the ball. And you've seen that they have, in my opinion, completely turned off the Darvin Ham. I, I would be stunned that this guy has a job next year in Los Angeles, particularly if LeBron comes back. So I don't have a great great outlook on the Lakers, to be honest with you, because you're asking them to win two. Now, your hope is someone like Sacramento, who lost again last night. But here's the thing. One of yeah. their games is against Portland. So they are another team not playing well. I think the losses of Hoyter and Monk hurt a lot more than people think. All three of those teams currently tied at 45 and 35. The Kings, Dubs, and Lakers all have won what is a difficult game, at least on paper, in one game against an easier opponent who has already been eliminated from playoff contention. So, J.Y., when you look at Sacramento, Golden State, and L.A., let's highlight the Warriors first. Since Draymond Green returned in the middle of January, this team is above 500. They were 18 and 21 before Draymond returned from his suspension or punishment or whatever you want to call it from the NBA. And Golden State, as of this moment, with the victory last night on the road in Portland, has won nine of their last 10 games. If you had to pick two teams out of the current four in the play in tournament standings, Suns, Kings, Warriors, Lakers, to get into the playoffs, who are those two teams you highlight? Well, I'm, I'm going to first go off with the Phoenix Suns. I think they're going to find a way to get it done. I know they've been wildly inconsistent, but obviously that big three, uh, if they are in that seventh spot just to win one game at home, I do like their chances. And then I'm going to go with Golden State. Why? You said it. Nine out of ten, playing their best basketball of the year. Clay Thompson all of a sudden coming off the bench, being the Clay that we thought we were going to get. Why, folks? He wants more money. His contract's up at the end of, the end of this year. As long as Draymond doesn't completely torpedo this team, and you never know, it could happen, Golden State should be that eighth team in the West, which is set up a fascinating matchup of Denver versus Golden State in the first round Oof. of the playoffs. That would be absolute cinema. Cinema indeed from JY. 27 to 1, by the way, for the LA Lakers at this moment. Eighth best number, but in front of the Pelicans and the Kings, who both actually are in front of the Lakers at this moment in the Western Conference standings. JY told you, not a big believer in Los Angeles. And out of the play in tournament teams, the Lakers have the worst price to make the playoffs, to win at least one or maybe two games in the play in tournament. So much to figure out in these seed lines. JY, thank you for not being scared off by us getting derailed with our Kentucky debates and firing through around the association to set up this final weekend of the NBA regular season.